Hi there, Pamela here to help calm your foundation paper piecing fears and show you how quick and easy it is to make my supernova quilt block. First you're going to need to print 25 copies of the foundation paper piecing pattern. I have here, for time's sake, already cut out uh, the 2 inch by 5 inch section of my background fabric. Um, and you are going to want to turn unit A paper over to the reverse side. I'm going to lay my background fabric that I've cut out here so it's roughly centered over um, section A1. It doesn't have to be perfect. You're going to trim this up. There is um, plenty of room for allowances there. And the very first thing I like to do to help um, help uh, with accuracy in my seams and piecing is to pin and seeing as the first seam that I'm going to show um, so is on section A2 I'm going to pin closer to section A3 okay now I've pinned there and then I like to take a um, just a note card or an index card, my add a quarter ruler. This is not necessary, but I find it really helpful because it has um, a little lip here that, and you'll see here in just a second why that's important. So now I'm gonna turn my paper back over and you can see I'm nice and centered um, over section A1. And I am going to take my index card and I'm gonna lay it on the line between section A1 and section A2. Um, get it nice and straight as possible. I am going to fold the paper over and crease it. I also like to use one of these, if you don't have you know crazy long nails like I do, um, then you're going to want to use something like maybe one of these bamboo, um, or they make plastic ones, um, folding or pressing bars. Okay, so here's where this little lip comes in handy. I am going to catch this lip right, um, right along where I folded my fabric and then I'm going to take my rotary cutter and I'm going to slice off that excess fabric. Okay, and now I have a perfect quarter inch seam here to go on. Okay, I'm going to fold that paper back out and now we are going to head over to our sewing machine. Now I'm here at my sewing machine and one of the first things that I want to show you is um, it makes it so much easier to remove your paper without harming your seams when you're foundation paper piecing if you shorten your stitch length. So for this block in particular, I like to take my stitch length down to uh, 1.2 millimeters. Okay, and now that um, now that I've got my sewing machine all set up and ready to go, I am going to um, take my fabric that I already have cut out for you here to go. Um, you'll notice in the pattern that I call for a fat quarter for each block. You may not necessarily need that much fabric. Um, I am have been using um, Tula Pink fabrics, and she tends to have really focal um, prints. There aren't really there's a lot of details that you want to catch in things. So the larger cut of fabric allows you to um, fussy cut or um, allows for directional prints as well as for error because if you make a mistake, um, you know, I'd hate for you to have to go out and buy more fabric. But in general, if you are not new to foundation paper piecing, um, or if you catch on really quickly, uh, which I hope you will, thanks to this video, um, you probably will not need a full fat quarter to, um, to make this block. Okay, so we are going to take our, um, our fat quarter pieces that we've already cut and we are going to lay them right along. And see, this is where that nice straight quarter inch seam already comes in handy. Um, we're gonna lay them right along the line um, that we just cut. And then I'm going to pin, and I'm gonna kind of pin at an angle 
just so the point is going toward that section my fabric in place and notice that I left the other pins in this is just to keep my fabric from shifting to ensure that my seams stay in place we will be taking those pins out eventually but for now um, I'm just going to leave them in I'm going to pin this in place and then I am going to turn it over and I am going to stitch along the line between a1 and A2. It's okay if you go over the line, that's just fine. As a matter of fact, it's even helpful to go a, qu a, a quarter inch or so. It doesn't have to be perfect over that line. And you'll see this thinner line that I have showing out here is actually your seam allowance. So there's a quarter inch seam allowance. This is the actual um, piece of the block. So I'll go ahead and stitch along that line. Oops, my presser foot got away from me here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and stitch right along that line. And I'm gonna stitch right up to that quarter um, inch seam allowance. Cut my thread. Okay, and then we're gonna turn it over back to where we were before. Up first, we're gonna have to take these pins out. I'm gonna take that little presser bar that I was using, and I'm just gonna press this fabric down nice and neat so I don't have to press this whole block just yet. Okay, and then another thing that will really come in handy to help um, when you're cutting out the final blocks is to pin this fabric in place. Part of the reason why I chose to foundation paper piece this block um, is because there are so many bias seams in this and um, it just really helps to have all the pins and the paper in place to keep this block from getting terribly stretched out. Okay, so you can see on the other side, I've got this pin here uh, and it covers up nicely this entire section A2. Okay. Now for trimming section um, A2 and the edge here, because it is the finished edge um, and I'm not gonna be sewing anything else to this particular side. I'm just gonna go ahead and lay my quarter inch line right along that seam and you'll see it matches up with the, um, with the outside edge of the seam allowance there. And I don't recommend before you begin a paper piecing project to use a new blade on your rotary cutter um, because I like to just go ahead and trim off the extra paper and the extra fabric with my rotary cutter and you see it's a little dull because I um, I had to go through that a couple times just to make sure it was cut because I have been using this for paper piecing um, but there you go so you have a perfect edge here now you're gonna go ahead and take those pins out um, that you had placed in earlier between sections A1 and A3, you're gonna go back with your index card. You're gonna lay it along that seam, fold it over, your handy dandy add a quarter roller, line it up with that edge. Go ahead and trim that excess fabric. And then you've got a nice straight line to work with there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and repeat the exact same way I did the other side. turn it over and sew along the line 
between um, sections A1 and A3. Okay, now that I have gotten um, sections A2 and A3 sewn um, on, and I've used my presser bar to press these out nicely, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna go about doing section A4. So you're gonna take your handy dandy note card, and you are gonna lay it along um, the line between these three sections and section A4. It's okay, like I said, that your seams have gone over, it's okay, just tear the paper up a little. This is where those nice short stitch lengths will come in handy. Um, you're gonna fold it over nice and neat. And you're gonna trim off the excess fabric that you have down here, lining up your add a quarter ruler with the note card and the fold. And then you're gonna trim off that excess. Sorry, I've, I'm sure I've broken like a million quilting rules there, but uh, what can I say, I'm a rebel. Okay, and then you're gonna take that two inch by um, 10 inch section of your background fabric that you've cut out, and you are going to um, just try to center it and line, um, center it around section A4, and you are going to line it up um, I'd tell you wrong side or right sides together, but it doesn't really matter. This and most solids don't have a side to them. So I'm just going to go ahead and line it up. And again, I am going to try to pin this in place, try to pin it away from, away from where you're sewing, but keeping it lined up with your seams. Okay, and then I'm going to stitch along the line between sections A1 and I'm not gonna use my card here again because I'm not sewing anything else to this, so I'm just gonna cut along the paper, uh, making sure that I line up my seam allowance uh, with the ruler, and I'm gonna trim off that excess from all sides. And there you go, section A is complete, and now, you will go ahead and I also want you to notice that I have these, um, the way that unit B is shaped um, on the edges. It's really important that you line up your um, ruler. And this is why I like to leave the paper on when I trim it. I just leave my ruler, um, line my ruler up with those corners there, and uh, I will show you why here in just a second. Okay, so now that I've got my A unit and B unit of my Supernova block put together, um, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to um, tear out the paper, and then I'm also going to show you why it was so important um, to cut these edges along with the seam guides that I provided you. So, as you'll see here, with those nice short stitch lengths, you can just tear off right along there and this paper comes out so easy. Okay. Those lines that you cut, it will um, it will line up exactly the edge of your B unit will line up exactly um, with the edge of section A4 on your A unit. So, once you line those edges up there, you're gonna go ahead and um, put some pins in there. You can keep your stitch length nice and short, um, and then you're gonna go ahead and sew your quarter inch seam. And there you have it. I've sewn my quarter inch seam um, and joined units A and B, and I've gone ahead and pressed them using heavy starch, and now I have a completed uh, center unit of my supernova quilt block. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and thanks for stopping by.